103, 104 miles goes through three different countries, um, France, Italy, Switzerland, and circumnavigates Mount Blanc with uh, over 30,000 feet of climbing. A lot of people ask me, well, why'd you pick uh, UTMB as your first 100? It's, you know, it's pretty extreme. I've been running pretty much year-round serious training the last 16 years of my life. I started when I quit soccer pretty much in uh, seventh grade. I was uh, 13 years old. The soccer coach at the time, he pulled me aside one, one game and said, you know, Sage, why don't you just run up and down the field and be a decoy? And, uh, cause you're better off without the ball. And that really struck me as like, you know, maybe you should pick a different sport. And 2007, at Cornell University, I qualified for the Olympic trials in the marathon. I finally made the Olympic trials, and once one race away from making the Olympics after that. It kind of struck me like, you know, maybe, maybe I could go pro after college. But at the time, I also didn't think it was feasible, because, you know, most people uh, graduating from college, you go out and you get a job, a regular job, and uh, make consistent pay. Whereas if, if you were a runner, it was kind of seen as being like a starving artist. You're just going out there and maybe you could, you know, get lucky in some races, run really fast and make a couple bucks here and there on the road circuit. You hear stories of guys going out to live in Boulder here, or Flagstaff, and a bunch of guys sharing a house and you just making their own bread to eat because they didn't have enough money to, to buy other food. So there were a lot of doubts. I definitely had the pressure from, you know, just people that I graduated in my college class to maybe other relatives in my family that, um, would be like, well, what are you doing? Like, what, what race are you gonna do next? Are you gonna make enough money uh, to pay rent or to, to even, you know, think about saving or, or put food on the table? I remember when I first came to Boulder, I just uh, was training for the Mount Washington Road Race and it was the US Mountain Running Champs. And I remember thinking, wow, if I win this race and I crack an hour, I'll be able to pay rent for two months here in Boulder. And so I was like, well, you have to win that race or you can't live in Boulder. <laughs> Once again, it went off, it was a big relief. I kind of just settled into about six flat for the first mile, and I was probably in the top 20. Um, but then I slowly worked my way up towards the leaders. Uh, I stayed with those guys through 20 miles, and by then it was starting to get dark, uh, so we turned on our headlamps. So I was you know, in position to, to try to be competitive and to try to win, um, and that's exactly what I wanted. So things were going to plan, and uh, we were going up well, one of the biggest climbs on the course, and it was beautiful full moon out. There's a view of Mount Blanc from the backside. I think we just crossed the border into Italy, and uh, I, I stopped to put on my jacket briefly, and the, the top four guys got maybe a minute ahead of me. I was going down a pretty smooth part of, of the trail, and I was kind of looking up over my shoulder towards the full moon. Tell Sage's family he's walking in and to wait for him and Cormier. Sage is okay and wants to walk to there but needs stitches tonight. Needs to what? Stitches. And I, I looked at my knee with my headlamp because uh, it was maybe one in the morning at that time. And I could see the blood just gushing out and I was just thinking I need to get to the next aid station. I need help. Got in the aid station. The, the people there were really helpful. I saw Sandy, uh, my crew there. and. We went right into the, the medical area where uh, a doctor saw me. Yeah, yeah. If you stay here uh -huh. and not run, uh -huh. is, is enough to put a switch. Oh, okay. This so, is the difference. Uh, because if you if you run, mm -hmm. the knee mm -hmm. continues this movement. Yeah, yeah. And the stretch is not enough. <laughs> I just have my race right now, I guess. I'm gonna finish. You know what? I'm gonna and finish. finish. I'm gonna finish. You I'll finish. Okay. I'll go finish. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, but I got up to Bertone, which is the next aid station, up on pretty high up on the mountain, and I absolutely could not run, uh, even in my trekking poles. Like I didn't care about the cut. I didn't care about the stitches. The integrity of my knee joint uh, was what bothered me the most. So we decided they could bring a helicopter up to the side of the mountain and just helicopter me straight back down into Cormier. 
even though the outcome's not what I expected at all and definitely not what I wanted, uh, I still uh, was happy to be able to enjoy these mountains and this trail and meet a lot of cool people. I did get to see more of the course, which was nice, and I got to run with the lead pack like I wanted to, so um, I learned you know, some things from that. Over 2,000 runners at toe the starting line of the UTMB, and so it's just this big scale event, and people are going all the way around Mount Blanc, over 100 miles uh, in the mountains, up and down into these cool towns. Seeing all the people running and, and making the finish, and just the, the drama you see when people are trying to make the cutoff, or people even coming in after spending two nights out in the mountains uh, after 30,000 feet of, of climbing. Being able to be out here and to, to travel out here and experience these mountains uh, was a real gift and uh, something I could look back on uh, with a, a good positive memory, so um, that's really important to me as well.